Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, April 10th, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the bear podcast with a determined length. Episode number 643. <laughs> and something <laughs> weird must have went on. Uh, I think that actually intro actually went pretty well. <laughs> anyway <laughs> we didn't hear the sounds i don't know why, oh you didn't hear reason. anything we didn't hear a single thing but <laughs> at least we had the visual to know what was happening <laughs> i must have forgotten to make sure that share sound anyways stop sharing hey, it was it was so funny it because we could at least tell the time and what was happening <laughs> Yeah, and it's um, I just thought it was. This is hilarious. actually one of the reasons why I share that. Yeah, I mean, I'm I appreciate it now, but well, I you know normally I'm on it anyway, but right. with the new like because it literally guess what it just did it just takes you back to fucking content view when you shared your screen. Um, yeah. thanks anyway. Just eat it, eat it. Anyways, <laughs> did you hear that? Ah. Yes. <laughs> it's one of our let's talk about food episodes today we are talking about gary childhood cereals mm-hmm. of course this is because this was the this was a recent ended up not discussion for me what was that jeff i'm like well nothing's really changed for me honestly yeah. So so I, I, I was able to get the first one, but then they then we kept kept going and I'm like oh, no, it's fine. I don't know, no, it's fine. I don't know that. <gasps> no, nothing. At least strikes there. <laughs> mm. Anyways. Yeah. Well, I will admit, okay, so this is this is based off of what last week? I was think it last this week just last Sunday? Um pre show, was it? Might have been. I don't Patrons, know. let us know. I think it was in the in the pre-show we had this discussion. Anyways, um, or some, or maybe it was post-show. David and I, I don't know. But <laughs> long story short, um, I was like, I, I felt like, oh, you know, that whole nostalgia thing about like, you know, cereals of your youth and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, childhood cereals. Uh, we've got a couple categories. Um, Category is th- this kind of like if you remember the old this that or others. Uh, we're, you know, putting in links to things and we got a, a couple of different things. Um, and yet again, in true producer fashion, luckily I put it an honorable mention section and Jeff has a bunch. So... <laughs> well, it's because none of them fit the other categories. <laughs> uh, well, well, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> okay. Um, it just cracked yeah. me up. I was like, I was like, oh, I should put honorable mentions in because every time I don't, Jeff asks about honorable mentions. Like he had them ready, so I was like, let me make a section, and then I'm just, I'm just tickled. You were like, and here's a handful. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> stuff I can actually mention. Um, so the first one, David wasn't happy about uh, what I titled this category, <laughs> but I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't know what else to call it. Um, Yo yum is a yuck for me. Uh, in other words, something that you disliked that is or was popular. This is probably the controversial category. Um, to clarify, uh, childhood cereals is things that like when we 
when we were just we, you know, cubs. Um, things that you know were, uh, and we were growing up. So, oh, that's adorable. You know, that's uh, that's that's the idea behind this. And some of these cereals go way back. Mm-hmm. Well, we're, we're also daddy cups, so. Well, mm-hmm. I'll explain how old uh, when we get towards the bottom. Um, anyways, <laughs> that being said, uh, Jeff, I honestly, um, I'm surprised at all of our selections in this category. Really? So, yes. Like mine made sense to me, and then I saw what the two of you picked, and I was like, "Oh, wow!" So, <laughs> I see, I really seem to be out. <laughs> I can no, I, I can understand everybody's choice. So obviously, yeah. I can understand my choice because yeah. it's my choice. Uh, but I, I can understand where the, the other both mm-hmm. of you are probably coming from. You will probably give more of an explanation for it. But um, so makes sense to me. Uh, but one thing that. Uh, it keeps kind of running into various things such as a cooking show known as Mythical Kitchen mm-hmm. uh, where they, I think they cooked an entire meal with Captain Crunch. And I've had Captain Crunch once. Mm-hmm. Once. Okay. I'm, so I am and really Never curious. again. I am really curious because Captain Crunch is one of my faves so i i really yeah i want to know like i want to know i i I, i'm not yucking your um yum i don't understand how you could even like it because all it all it is is plastic hard (laughs) (laughs) i thought you were gonna say it is just sugar uh, and nothing no. but sugar. It, it, I... it didn't even. It, 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 I mean, there are plenty of cereals which are essentially pure sugar, but they, they're uh-huh. they're they're not like a solid chunk of crystallized sugar. It's they're <laughs> a little more fluffier. Mm. They have the crunch, but they're they're. They could soak up, uh, soak up milk. As far as I could tell, tell Captain Crunch, it, it would dissolve. Maybe I don't know. It didn't mm, taste no. good to me. It, so, the texture was awful, and it just it, it was. You could say that it's too crunchy. You might say. In fact, I didn't think it was crunchy at all. It was just <laughs> solid as a rock. Well, and I will say this, this when is, I've had this it, is all, again, all my it, it, it is the equivalent to, um, that, well, this is, this is really extreme. It's the equivalent to eating gravel or shards because it's just going to cut your mouth up. Like that's all there is to personally, it. Like, personally, uh, and not to, to foreshadow personally, it's worse than grape nuts. Ooh. Uh, Yes. Jeez, that's not shade. Right. It's true. It's it's oh, true. Oh, fine. Then Cabin Crunch is one of the what is is one of the hardest, crunchiest cereals mm-hmm. in existence. And I and I and and I don't think that's necessarily a negative thing. It's more about like your jaw strength and how much you prize the inner yeah. lining of your mouth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I will. <laughs> <laughs> and whether or not you want to have diabetes, <laughs> like <laughs> David with the fact man. So truth, truth. So as a kid, this one was one of my favorites. Mm. Why? Um, because it was a really sugary cereal that did not like get super soggy right. really quickly. So you had your Frosted Flakes and your 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 Fruity Pebbles or, um, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then you had Captain Crunch that was never, I mean, it does eventually get soggy, but it takes a while. So you could literally probably pour a bowl and watch a cartoon oh. and still have, like, crunchy cereal. Right, right. Um, so that's, I think, for me, why it was one of my favorites. Although, fair um, my favorite is actually Crunch Berries. Um, okay. The, the one with the little, like, right. Cause there's, cause there's a whole line 
oh, of yeah. flavors. There's the classic Cap'n Crunch. There's Cap'n Crunch Crunch Berries. There's Cap'n Crunch Peanut Butter Crunch. Mm-hmm. There's the Oops All Berries, which kind of cracks me up. Um, and then we've got snack <laughs> pouches yeah. of and- the Mega Berries, the Oops All Berries, Churro Bites, which is intriguing to me. Those are chocolate cinnamon, apparently. And then there's another flavor I've never seen before, which is chocolate caramel crunch. I haven't seen that one before either. I but know. I will say this much. So, yes. So, Jeff, yes. Like, my the roof of my mouth has probably suffered tremendously over the years for that. So, I probably, <laughs> you know, so the issues I'm having now probably had to do with the fact that I ate crunch berries a lot or cabbage crunching, whatever, a lot as a kid. A quick, quick note on this because, uh, as part of my research for for trying to pick some things for this, I, I went to the ever reliable and I put that in quotes source of Wikipedia, mm-hmm. which for the most part it's pretty reliable. Uh, yeah. But it has a list of a bunch of the versions of crap Captain Crunches through the years. We've got our regulars, we got our Crunch Berries, Cocoa Crunch, Cocoa Donuts. Chocolatey Crunch, Chocolatey Berry Crunch, Cinnamon Crunch, Cinnamon Roll Crunch, Deep Sea Crunch, Home Run Crunch, Peanut Butter Crunch, Punch, punch Crunch, uh, Sprinkled Donut Crunch, Touchdown Crunch, and Not Vanilla Crunch. Okay, only one of them intrigues me, and I'm not sure I would like it. The Chocolate what? Berries? Chocolatey berry crunch. Yeah, I don't I don't know how I feel about that. Cause like chocolate well, covered berries are a thing. Yeah. Like I don't go nuts raspberry. for them, but I've enjoyed them. Like but I don't know if in this thing. cereal context I would like be all for it. Yeah, chocolate berry crunch. <gasps> okay. But there we go. Sorry, 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 sorry. Keep going. Okay. So going. yeah, no, um, and the fact that they create, I, I thought I saw this not in the store, but that it had come to market. The fact that they have a Cap and Crunch Ocean Blue artificially f- maple flavored syrup for the kids is just wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's incredibly <laughs> wrong. And if you're wondering why they invented like or released a blue syrup, it's because they have a Cap and Crunch Berry Tastic Pancake Mix. Jesus Christ, come on. So it's pancakes with berry, crunch berry cereal in it. Because, you know, that's what we do now. We take other products and we mash them together with things. Mm-hmm. And we, make, we make new, new, air quotes, new things. So, yeah. I just, uh... <sighs> so you know. Alrighty. So that being said, uh, David, what is your uh, was, was, is, was popular, but... Yeah, so my one here is Honey Smacks, or, and I will even call it the um, Super Golden Crisp. They're the, kind of the same thing. Honestly, they are both the same fucking thing. Um, Super Golden Crisp gets a bit of a pass because I really like the bear mascot, but that, that goes without saying. Um, <laughs> but so honey... how, how about that? Like, just just as a, just a complete aside, I'm going to derail for a second, sorry. Uh were you ever drawn to a cereal because of its mascot? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I could I could go in some in some really inappropriate directions. You know, like <laughs> if you're into polyamory, maybe Rice Krispies was you know Snap Crackle Pop was your thing. Um, you know, <laughs> I, so maybe I even will... think for redheads, so you go with you know Lucky Charms. Right. Sorry. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, the idea of um, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry, don't mind me. Boop a doop boop. Um, I remember commercials like that's the thing. Like I remember a lot of commercials, and I remember like the gold. Like I mentioned the, the super golden Chris bear because that was the one. I think his name was actually Sugar Bear. I'm pretty sure I'd have to look it up again. But anyway, I. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember liking that and liking he gets a pass, but I didn't like the cereal. So I liked the mascot, but I didn't like the cereal. So <laughs> Honey Smacks and Super Golden Crisp, but I'll, I'll call I'll use Honey Smacks as the main one. Are let's see, can you, are you gonna give me my description? Um 
It's a cereal made from oh, that's whole grain and sweet tasted honey. I need like sweetened, what actually... sweetened puffed wheat. Yeah, that's what it is. It's that puffed wheat cereal. Right. So, if you've looked at um, Honey Smacks, if you've ever like looked at a bowl of Honey Smacks, it looks like beans. Um, <laughs> like that's what it looks like to me. And for some reason, my brain as a kid, and even probably even now. Could not disassociate it. Now, was it sweet? Yes. Was it tasty? Mm. Um, it tasted like sugar. Like that was the big mm. thing for for me. And it wasn't appetizing. And the puff wheat wasn't my thing. I just didn't like it. I did not like it. Right. Um, I don't know particularly why, but that was one of the one of the two things that for me was just like, eh, nothing. I'll tell. I'll, I'll pass. But. On the flip of that, it was one of, I think, one of my brothers or maybe even my sister's favorite cereal. Mm. Um, so the, we also the bear used to was get named it. Wally, by the way. Wally. Oh, ah, what? But he has an SB on his shirt. I thought that stood for Sugar Bear. <laughs> I'm looking at the the Honey Smacks Wikipedia article. Diggum was replaced by an animal more associated with honey, Wally the bear, in 19. 19- 1986, 1984. Oh, well, that's Honey Smacks. I'm talking about the Super Golden Crisp Bear. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because uh... they had like, 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 even as we're doing it, I'm hearing the commercial for Super Golden Crisp in my head. Like, that's how like invasive some of this shit is. So, so hey, you know, we we know this shit now, but guess what? Like. Kids were absorbing shit from a very young age, and they absorb it, and it stays in their brains, sometimes forever. Like, I have, like I said, I, I, I didn't even have to look it up. I know the super, like, somewhat know the Super Golden right. Crisp um, commercial medley. So get this. So uh, Golden Crisp, known mm-hmm. as, also known as Sh- uh, Sugar Crisp, um, advertising in the 50s positioned it as a sugar seal to be appropriate for breakfast or as a snack or as a candy because it was similar to Cracker Jack. Um, it had three animated cartoon bears named Dandy, Handy, and Candy. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And the early slogan said, as a cereal, it's Dandy. For snacks, it's so handy or eat it like candy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Later televised advertisements featured one mascot, an anthropomorphic cartoon bear known as Sugar Bear, who sings the jingle, can't get enough of that sugar crisp. Sung to the tune of Joshua Fit the Battle of Jericho. Okay, so I so, so did not know that. So Honey Smacks and and uh, Golden Crisp are Basically the same thing, but made by two different companies. One by Kellogg's exactly. Honey Grit, and Sugar Crisp was uh, uh, Post. Post. So yeah. what's wild to me is how many uh, like or facsimile products there are between these like major brands that are that are out in the market. Like it cracks me up because you see one and I'm like, wait, isn't that just the same thing as this? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's wild. Interesting. So I get it. Like, why would you explain that it looked like beans? That you wouldn't be interested or doesn't mm-hmm. really appeal mm-hmm. to you? I get it. Yep. Makes yeah. sense. That was my big thing. No, I didn't like it. It, yeah. it also was very, at least, I don't think I really ever had had sugar crisps, but I had a honey, honey snacks. snacks. Mm-hmm. And um, they were very light. Yeah, they like, they were melt in your mouth, but they had a booty of honey. Yeah, mm. yeah, they very were very sweet, but the actual yeah. like yeah, not... delivery yeah. and... <laughs> device was really, really light. Let's not let's not call it honey. That's that just call it sugar. It was a glaze of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean honey is sugar. <laughs> right, but I think that I think the distinction is is that in the flavor differences between those two cereals. Hun- honey smacks would have had a slightly um earthy or malty kind of like sugary taste yeah, to it because I, I think the i think in order to call it honey smacks there has to be some honey 
in it. It's just not like pure honey that they coat the right puffed wheat in. So yeah, no. otherwise it would be completely sticky. And well, they were honey's max was pretty sticky, but uh, mm-hmm. but it would uh. it would also be uh, uh, a little more liquidy. They needed something to solidify it more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it cracks me up that they're like talking about it, it eat it like candy. And I was like, this ain't no MMs. <laughs> that shit gonna stick to your hand. <laughs> Especially grubby little like toddler Kitty. hands. <laughs> yeah. Um So Gary, how about you? Because yours is rather interesting. Uh speaking of grubby little toddler hands, because uh, <laughs> this is how I know of this. Um, original Cheerios. Mm-hmm. Mm. I have seen so many moms, so many parents just give gobs of gobs and gobs and gobs of Cheerios to their to their infants, not their infants, but like their toddlers, like just give them something to snack on or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? Like, but then I realized I was like, oh, because it's kind of a healthy cereal, like, you know, that 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 whole wheat oat bran whatever you know does mm-hmm. your heart good now to be fair a sugary. right there's there's a whole series of cheerios flavors that are out there which we'll get um, to later <laughs> so sure. yeah i mean like i think they're the biggest uh replicated i don't know duplicated whatever varietal mm-hmm. of a main cereal brand um that's out there which is kind of crazy to me but yeah just the like and and so I remember it being kind of popular when I was a kid. Like it was one of those things that, you know, if you couldn't get kids cereal, this was probably the closest you got to sugary kids cereal that was similar or whatever. Um, and it's funny because, David, when you were talking about sitting in front of the television to watch cartoons and have cereal, I was like, oh, I never got to do that. Oh. Like I could watch cartoons on Saturday mornings, but I wasn't allowed to have cereal and watch cartoons. I oh. always had to have breakfast in the kitchen at the table ah which oh man if you I'm were part, a big I'm part, part of the TV generation fan. right i'm part of the yeah. generation that we you know at least when i was younger until my parents divorced i would say um before i was a teen and then maybe that's about when that changed <laughs> like we would eat in the living room with the television on but like yeah that was a big deal like we we were i mean my parents are part of the 50s 60s generation so it was like mm. you just didn't do that like you didn't and the living room was the clean space clean yeah. space you didn't go in the like we so growing up for us um so it was we were it was we had to eat in the kitchen don't get me wrong we weren't mm-hmm. eating in our rooms no 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 <laughs> um but um but in the kitchen especially later i think in the 80s for sure but in, definitely in the 90s we had a tv um in the kitchen now in my mind, I don't know where that TV is because what I remember of our kitchen, <laughs> if you walked into the, like, if you came in from the bedroom hallways, the, the hallway where our bedrooms were, across from us is where the table was. And then there was a closet, the pantry here. And then um, there was a door leading out to the garage and then a door leading down to the basement on the left, far left corner. And then you had microwave, sink, and then it turned and there was the stove. And then next to that is what is has been blocked. But I think maybe that's where the TV went. But I'm also mm. remembering a TV on a rolling cart. A cart or rack. So mm. maybe maybe it rolled into the onto the side. No, that's where the microwave was. Anyway. Again, this is these are this is years ago. Like yeah. no, what in our live in our well, the way our living room and kitchen was set up, um, there was only one seat at the kitchen table that could see into the living room. And like when I was really young, we had a small black and white like um, television, like a 13 inch. Um, and we had that for years until we had a fire. Um, mm. And the house got struck by lightning and oh, wow. the, the lightning struck the roof of the house. And then it traveled down the um, chimney. And the television was directly in front of the chimney. So it traveled down the chimney and then it like shot out through the, the tube of the television across the living room. I was sitting on my mother's lap. Um, my mother like let out a, a bit of a yelp 
Um, we were fine. We didn't get struck or anything, but the TV got fried. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> there was a fire. The fire department came. Dad was, like, volunteer with the fire department. My grandparents came. My grandfather <laughs> was holding me in the in the driveway. All the excitement bothered me, so I threw up on him. <laughs> oh! <laughs> My grandfather, yeah. You know, one of those things. I was, like, I don't know. I was, like, five. Wow. I was real, I was really young. Yeah. So it after just... that, we got another television temporarily for a little while. And then I think when I was like eight, we got the mother floor model console. Yeah. Wood speakers on the side. Uh-huh. Color television. Like oh. yeah. This was, this was this was still where you had to stand up and turn the knob on the television or Oh hell yeah! Fuck no, we had, there were, we didn't get remotes until I was in high school. Like, <laughs> like, like you always had to get up. And that was the other thing is the house that I grew up in was the house of um, my grandfather. My great grandfather had built um, while my grandfather was was young, like my age at that time. Um, and so we, the floor in the living room was a vintage like burgundy wine colored wool carpet. So it itched. It was never pleasant to lay on. So I always had to like have a blanket or something under me. But because, of course, I wanted to be closer to the TV and I didn't want to sit proper on the couch, which I always got yelled about. Um, I was always the one that the price I had to pay because I was an only child was I always had to get up and go change the channel. Yes. That was how that so, worked. God. <laughs> so many memories. That's a that's a whole other show. Um, so I think <laughs> like TV nostalgia because I remember that I remember the big ass TV. I remember the having to get up to get you know turn the channel. Um, I remember rabbit ears, kind of sorta. That was kind of a thing. And then when cable was a big thing and when it first came out, I don't know if you had it, but since you had these TVs that you had to turn the channel to, you had a a block, and it had numbers from like one to like or two to something and you had to you had the square and you had to push the thing across it to get to the channel like i don't know if y'all remember that but i had well on the console we had two two knobs Uh uh-huh so you had um uhf Mm -hmm. and i think you had two through 13 Mm mm-hmm or 14 or something like that. And I'm trying to remember what the second knob was, but there was a whole combination deal. And then when cable came around, we did get a box. Um, and I think the original box had like 10 or 12 switches, like channel switches. And then there was something else. And then I remember we got another box and it had like two rows of buttons. And I think those you pushed in. And then for a good number of years, like this is long before the technology advanced. My godfather had read up on how to how to rig up a coffee can to unscramble Cinemax. Oh. <laughs> and so you had a coax cable that went into this janky coffee can <laughs> that had a screw top and some components in it or whatever. And then you took the coax cable out the other side on the bottom. And every once in a while, I had to fiddle with the the screw, the nut on the coffee can in order to get the the black and white snow to like go away. Go and you would get yeah, for the most part, get... so we could watch Cinemax. Oh yeah, oh oh, yeah. oh Maybe, my that god, was the 80s. that was the eighties. That 80s. was the eighties. You were pirated shit. Anything you could like. See. <laughs> yes. But up there, so back to, to the cereal thing though. I am. Yeah, um, we'll no, I wasn't allowed yeah. to eat cereal in front of the tv it's so weird but only one seat in the kitchen could see to the left to look straight out the living room or the kitchen which wasn't very big and then you could see the living room but anyways my whole point about the console tv was that it was at the far end of the tv so or the room so even if you sat at that chair and looked to your left to watch the tv i mean it was a decent sized tv but still like it's not mm-hmm. close no it was, yeah you're not getting you're not getting detail you're just getting if, there, if it's on at all, there was for for us. There pretty much was no wall between our our kit, our dining room and our uh, living room. Oh, so the TV though was was on a wall that was perpendicular to that open area, but frequently for everyone, especially during the sporting events, we would turn the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Like, um, oh Lord, um, yeah. So we had the wall, 
and the living room was kind of untouchable. And I think that's maybe why we had the TV in the li- in the kitchen. Mm. Because the the living room was kind of not like except for like gatherings and small little things here and there. The living room was was not to be like sat in. You sat in the kit. You sat at the kitchen table. You sat in your room. Mm. We had it. We had a semi finished basement. Um, oh, that's a again. We could talk about. Let's at some point maybe make a story about like nostalgia and growing up because that, like, yeah. Anyway, um, but we had like a like a small like fam- what you would consider like a family room or family area in the basement, um, which included like a set some couches and stuff around one of the bigger TVs. Um, it was eventually where we got our, we set up a computer, our first computer that we ever had, Commodore 64. Um, uh, we had a pool table. Um, emphasis on had. Um, and uh, it was, it was that I remember the most because that's probably where, especially when, as I started getting older, I would congregate. Um, mm-hmm. Because it was the place where me and my sister could actually watch stuff together. Um, in the basement, in the cold ass, dank ass basement, um, that was not insulated, by the way. That's why I said semi finished. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dad was like, I'm going to put something on the, like something that is not concrete on the floor, did not level it. So we just had like some random tile or paper or something on the floor and that was it and anyway it's cereal. Stuff. yeah <laughs> well so what i find interesting is this like us talking about like you know television and, and television viewing and cereal is um i'm looking at this whole list of all these titles and you can't tell me that television didn't influence us when it came to kids cereals no, like uh, it definitely did that was about commercials. It was, it was about advertising. Right. It was it was totally marketing, as we're about to discuss in our next category. Like, <laughs> um, so these this is wish you could have again, aka discontinued, no longer available. So, um, and at least the ones that we have listed here, these were very hot of the moment of the time, and were not meant to last forever. And right. I, I I will start us off. I don't have any. Like if I had any of those special cereals or or any other discontinued one, uh, it didn't make it as big of an impression. It was a oh neato, and that's about it. So mm. if I never have it again, it's not that big of a deal for me. Anymore, yeah, so. yeah. Well, I have to admit, it took me a moment to think about this. I was like, what was one that I like? I remember so much fondly as a kid, like if I could have it again, I would get it. Or like if they brought it back, I might buy a box and yeah. probably be disappointed. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so and it, David, what was your, uh, your selection? So mine is actually, it's apparently 1988 and it was called, and I kid you not, the Nintendo serial system. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that. I just thought of it as Nintendo. Um, it was Nintendo cereal. And the way it worked was you had two cereals in one box. So imagine being eight, nine, ten years old, and you get a choice in one box. Right. Do I want this one or do I want that one? Now Wait, so they they weren't mixed. No, they it weren't. It was like mixed. two half bags. Yeah, you had two shorter, smaller bags that were open now the original tension i think was you could open the box on each side and then pour it from the sides but i think we just opened up the top and pulled out the bags and did it separately anyway so you had a as i'm if i'm looking at this again let me look at this picture again you had the fruity super mario brothers cereal and then you had the berry zelda cereal so Super Mario Brothers and Zelda were the two like most popular games for Nintendo at that time. Um, of all time. Yeah, uh, that's true. Um, and uh, it's funny because I remember this very well. I remember the commercial. I talked about this story before. 
totally remember the commercial. Um, we were talking about this last week. And I remember the flavor of the cereal. And to be blunt, probably now, they probably tasted exactly the same. <laughs> they were just two different, like berry and fruity. Like, yeah. Unless the fruit fruity was citrusy and the berry was, you know, like strawberry, whatever. It probably tasted about the same. That's like saying that all fruit moves taste different. They don't. True. Um, so I, I just, I remember, and I remember having this one and having it a couple of times before it was gone. It didn't last very long. Yeah, it was discontinued in 1989. Yeah, which is so weird because I, well, I guess, what's, I guess I'll put it like this. The weird thing for me is that it somehow has had an, such an impact that I remember it to this day, right? Well, and I think the novelty that you're describing, which is which is a bit unique, is the dual the dual cereal in the in a box thing. Mm -hmm. There's only one other flavor brand. Well, I don't know what you want to call it that would have done that, and that was Nerds, mm -hmm. because they were replicating the Nerds candy box that had the two flavors in it, so that you could slide the little thing on the edge, like on either side, to to get a flavor of Nerds. Um, that's the only other thing I could think of. I don't remember any other cereal being like two different flavor things and not yeah. mixed together. Like, you know, so you mm -hmm. can just pick what you wanted. Yeah. So that was me. Great. Gary. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, wait. wait. Uh, slight comment. This is not really a cereal or anything. But one thing I kind of wish was still around was cereal adventure uh, in the Mall of America. It was okay. a General Mills branded thing. <laughs> I don't know I'm what looking it up. I'm looking and it up because I was like, I, don't I, know I actually worked there about. briefly during the time that I ended up at, for some reason, having three jobs. How? <laughs> it, it was a mess. I ended up quitting just because I'm like, I, I think I slept through one of my shifts. But they had one where you could actually like get your get yourself uh, uh we would uh, snap a picture of somebody and then create a sticker and paste it onto to a Wheaties box or a box of Wheaties that people could do and they had a cereal bar and you could also make your own cereal where you would mix some different of the uh, uh, cereals into your own personal box. Shut the front door that this was an actual thing. Mm -hmm. I know it was a thing because I worked there briefly. In 2000, General Mills opened the Serial Adventure at MOA, an elaborate experiential marketing initiative that featured a two-story Lucky Charm slide, a lab where kids could learn how cereal is made, and a cereal bar that was a popular spot among morning mall walkers during its three-year tenure. Wow. That's so. I uh, anyway. <laughs> I mean, that, that kind of falls into. Well, I don't know if you would want to go back there, but that's that's uh, U.S. marketing kids. That's that's totally like like schlocking <laughs> sweet stuff in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Wow, wow. And I guess and that's so as weird is that like, wasn't really my childhood though. <laughs> well, I get I yeah you yeah you were working there, but like. Mall of, Mall of America, though. But, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's Mall of America. It's meant, you, know, you would think it would probably would have done more or been more, like, maybe known more about it. I don't recall it, but that's kind of Look, fun. There was probably several different shops. Like, the, the amusement park that was in the middle of uh, Mall of America was not Camp Snoopy for the longest time. And it's no longer there. Well, then... Mm -hmm. it, it's there, but it's no longer Camp Snoopy. Ah, understood. Wow. Anyway, Gary, what about you? Jeff, do you remember, sorry, before I get on my, oh. do you remember when you worked at Serial Adventure? Like what year or years? Or it, it was somewhere during that frame. I don't remember. It was probably, what was it, 2000 to 2003? Yeah. Um. Uh, 
I don't know. It was probably like 2001. Why do you ask, Gary? Because I'm going to put a link in here. There is a PBS news coverage story about this from 2001 and it's on it's on site and they and they like have all these people dressed in these polos working there and i'm not watching i've watched the whole thing it's only like five minutes but i'm just i'm like it would be so fucking wild if jeff was in the background shot of this <laughs> At the it's just kind of... huh? <laughs> i was That's... also i was much skinnier yes yes and i don't yes. remember if i had more hair or not ah Actually, I probably didn't because I've I've had this hairstyle forward since I left college. Wow. I got sick of styling my hair. This is pretty interesting. Like the footage that they're showing, it's this like exhibit. It reminds me of like when you go to like um, the World Fair or your state fair, like Mm. how they do these elaborate like immersive kind of environment things where they you know try to teach you about like the dairy industry and butter making or whatever you know like (laughs) that's that's kind of uh part of what i what i think it happens (laughs) anyways i'm gonna stop watching that (laughs) well and show Uh, that link i want to take a look at it yeah it's in the doc now um i put it for your cereal so (laughs) Um, for myself, I don't know why, but I have this thing, this, uh, thing in my heart for c 3 POs. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Um, I was a big star Wars, you know, fan, uh, as a young child. And the fact that they came out with a cereal now to be fair, there's another star Wars cereal. I think that came out. Where there other. was, there was more than one, um, and I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, I know about the Star Wars different episodes, but that's not what I'm thinking of. Hmm. Um, I thought there was a Yoda one. Maybe not. Um, or there's something else. But anyways, so uh, Sith Repios was from Kellogg's. Uh, it had a brief life. It is listed as honey sweetened cereal pieces that are shaped like small figure eights. Because that totally makes sense. Um, and apparently it was said to taste uh, like alphabets, but with more crunch. Um, alphabets. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but so the big thing is, is that, um, of course, because it was a Star Wars branded cereal, an official licensed merchandise like product line, it usually had a lot of um, tie ins. Mm. So there was cards. Um, I remember you could cut out masks off the back of it <laughs> like to wear. Um, yeah, it says some of the known premiums was the plastic Rebel Rockets, stickers, trading cards, cutouts for masks, and send away for action figures. I think the 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 eights were meant to be like C3PO's eyes. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, I don't know what the eights have to do yes. with anything. It seems so for some reason they didn't decide to do his like body shape which to me would have been the most obvious thing to do like just make little somewhat looking you know like things <laughs> i mean they did that in the nintendo one they made little figures that were supposed to be mario or link or whatever so they could have easily mm. done that. but but yeah anyways so that was that was the, the thing that i was like if they brought it back i would probably buy it <laughs> and eat it Mm. be like wow this is not like i remember wow this is terrible <laughs> <laughs> well i hope not like i hope it's well, tasty but it just yeah it probably would be too damn sugary or sweet that's that's mm. the thing i find more often than not about uh cereals these days like kid cereal especially i'm just like okay like mm. my 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 pancreas can only handle so much um Back. This kind of feeling on that. So, that being said, uh, third category. Um, so, still enjoy today. So, this is, you know, that nostalgia thing. Like, like it's still around. Now, the formula may have changed, 
But like if you like if you're in the store, like or you're, I don't know, visiting family, maybe, you know, and they've got kids or whatever. And you see something, you're kind of like, oh, I remember, you know, and so like that's that's kind of the idea behind this. If it's anything something that's that, of nostalgia purposes. Yeah. Um, Nothing so that, for that, me that, is actually nostalgic. OK, like I, I will admit, like I had to kind of think about this for a bit because I wasn't allowed to have a lot of sugary cereals as a kid. So I was like, wow, like, did I really have anything, you know, that um, spoke to me? But eventually I settled it on one because I. And I'll Why don't you go ahead and talk about it. Um, uh, so Fruity Pebbles. Which is basically pure sugar. <laughs> and these little itty bitty like non like natural colors like <laughs> like okay so if you're watching us on youtube like david and i have these like cereal colorful kids cereal kind of backgrounds right jeff jeff has the nostalgia like here's the cereal boxes um mine looks like fruit loops uh primarily that's about the, like, the only thing i can think of that would have that or fruit rings or whatever the generic version is damon has um what i think is uh tricks yep or something of that sort so mine are round rings and his are like round balls like round balls so here's the thing mine like looking at the colors that. don't seem very natural like, <laughs> they're like they're i mean they're there's not many foods that are specifically these colors especially when it comes to like trying to make something of that Damon's on the other hand looks to be a little bit more realistic because they're not so vibrant. And that's the thing about fruity pebbles is like the colors of fruity pebbles are like my background. They are bright. Like they are meant to be attractive, like visually stimulating. Um, and recently <laughs> uh, I bought um, cause they're so in the, October in Breast Cancer Awareness Month, a local drag queen does a bake sale each year, along with all these baskets and stuff as a as a cancer awareness fundraiser. They've been doing it for 10, 15 years now. So um, and they hadn't done it in two years, obviously, because of the pandemic. So this past year, I was like, oh, I'm going to or maybe it had been. Yeah, it had been like two years. Uh, so anyways, I was I, I tend to around that time of year, I buy baking boxes baking mixes like different stuff that's easy to make and um mm -hmm. so i'm always kind of keeping an eye out for things that are discounted um you know uh because like it's nearing its end of shelf life or stuff like that and i try to keep an eye out best by date so anyways one of them was fruity pebbles cupcakes mm. from this cross promotion thing so it's basically a, a white cake mix vanilla flavored with um you know an icing and, and it you know you just oil water egg mm -hmm, mix mm -hmm. or bake but huh. it had fruity pebbles and a whole packet inside and you added it to the batter right before you baked it and you put some in the icing um and so i had like a spoonful because i was like i'm like i haven't had fruity pebbles in like 40 years like wow something of that sort and let me tell you, I was like, mmm, sugar. <laughs> <laughs> all I tasted. Like, and I mean, it's some, some fruit, kind of essence. I don't know. You got a fruit flavoring of some kind. <laughs> but man, it was just like so sweet. I was like, are my teeth going to fall out? This is awful. Like, mm. like I couldn't imagine having a whole bowl. Like that's, that's the crazy part. This concept of like the nostalgia thing. Like I did it for that factor. And then I went, Ooh, man. Yeah. That's, that's kind of wild. So mm. that's, that's why it, cause it was the one thing that came to mind and I was like, yeah, it, like it brings back flavor. You know, it's, 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 you know, a rainbow, a variety of colors. Uh, it's sweet and crispy rice uh, cereal. Oh, it says with an intense fruity flavor. I think they mean intense sweet <laughs> flavor. Oh, somebody gave it two stars. Oh, I eat a lot of fruity pebbles and have been for over 25 plus years, but I don't know what they did that possessed them to make it downright disgusting. Dang. They just kind of read them for Phil. Someone's like, this doesn't have flavor anymore. <laughs> they ruined it. There's all these negative, like, 
feedbacks. We've bought our last box. There must have been a mishap. This used to be my favorite cereal. Ooh. Mixed reviews on the website. Snap, snap, snap. Don't know what you did, snap. post. Anyway, snap. Anywho. Family favorite for over 40 years. Yeah. Just, you're, I get it. You're saying I'm old. They celebrated their 50th birthday last year in 2021, the cereal. Wow. Came out in 71. So it's older than me. It's, it, 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 based off of what I can read here, they changed the recipe. I'm kind of not surprised. I mean, it, I, mean it, I think it's bound to happen over time, unfortunately, for costs. Please take away I, this puffy cereal. It's too sweet and does not taste like the original Fruity Pebbles my children and I would eat every day. Take it back, please. <laughs> but anyway, so that was that was the one that I selected um, for the still enjoy today. I should really put question mark. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of like, especially recent ones. Wow. Anywho, plates. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, I'll go to mine. Um, and it's kind of a weird sort of thing, but I get, I, I get it. So, I was the biggest fan. So the round, like, so Jeff. Gary's background is like a perfect example of the fruit, the set, the flavors I like. I like fruitier cereals. I will own that personally. Trix was one of my favorites. Fruit Loops was one of my favorites. And then there was Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks are an apple cinnamon cereal, um, flavored cereal. Um, but I think for me, what was the fun part was they were, it was all one color. It was green with little red bits on it, which I think were they're supposed to be the apple part. I don't know. Um, and they were just they were just really tasty. And it was for me anyway. Again, this is me going through there's two colors. Yeah. Oh, maybe there were two. Yeah, colors. there there's there's green and and red. Yellow. Oh yeah, the like yellowy orangey something. I, yeah. Oh, wow. I think it's wow. supposed to be kind of a representation of like green apples and red apples. Yeah. Okay, why did I forget that? Wow, okay, so... I mean, it's on the page you linked. <laughs> yeah, well, I know. Well, now, <laughs> now they look like green and orange O's. Yeah. With... And I'm pretty sure they looked that, that yeah. way to begin with, too. But I there's another that. there's another cereal out there that is very similar to this. And I can't think of what it is. I even watched a YouTube video. Oh, so I was wrong. So Apple Jacks used to be all like that orangey yellow color if i'm looking oh. at some pictures and now they're they added the green ones interesting there we go i knew there was something weird anyway anyway favorite one of my favorite cereals very tasty um so here's my question david when was the last time you had it um so believe it or not um, one of the things we were mentioning last week were the um, like the little bowls that I got at work for mm -hmm. cereal. Apple Jacks was one of the bowls. Okay. So I had I had that. I want to say when work was still open. Sad face. Um, probably <laughs> 2020 at some point, like very early um, 2020. Probably the last time. It was also one of the last times I had like Fruit Loops and because um, they also had Fruit Loops. So they had Fruit Loops, Apple Jacks, um, Raisin Bran Crunch, and um, Frosted Flakes, and the Frosted Mini Wheats. And, mm. um, and they didn't have a whole lot of the. Um, Oh, Honey Nut Cheerios. I knew there was one out of one. Um, I was like, I think there were six. Anyway, um, they didn't always have a lot of the, the Apple Jacks ones, but I used to, that was one of the ones I used to get. Um, but it was just a familiar. It's all good. I, I, it's it's a nice flavor that I just, I think everyone kind of likes apple in some way, shape, or form. Um, kind of homey. Um, definitely nostalgic. Apple Jacks were, were also not particularly overly sweet. I was just going to ask you about that because I don't think I've ever had them. <gasps> they are tasty. 
What? I just, there's plenty of food in the world I haven't eaten. Like the. I mean, fair. <laughs> and don't get confused with the the deep fried um, hand pies called Apple Jacks. Because I'm doing a search right now, and I was very confused. I was like, wait, what? Um, jacks or fried pies apparently are a southern tradition. So there are things known as apple jacks, which are like little handheld pies um, that could have apple in them. Not the same thing. This is different, obviously, because it's a cereal. So, yeah. Oh, I guess that's the thing. Okay, cool. Um, and apparently, back in 2003, they did apple jacks with blue carrots. Child, these companies, they need to, like, <laughs> they just need to stop messing with shit. Like wow, make it things. Two thousand what? Two thousand three. Apple jacks with blue carrot shapes. Same great taste, no apple taste, no carrot taste. Same great jacks taste. <laughs> <laughs> That's so confusing. If it's called Apple Jacks, why wouldn't it taste like apples? But anyways. And they were. They were all like orange. And then they have these weird blue blobs. But oh, anyways. I don't, I don't know why they do this I stuff. do not like that. That does <laughs> not look pleasant. No. <laughs> so, okay. We run <laughs> long. <laughs> uh, so that being said, um, I think that Gets us to honorable mentions. So my so, honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. Get them out of the way. Pretty much, these are the ones that I really enjoyed when I was okay. a kid. Still living at home. Anything at least under the age of eighteen, if not fifteen, maybe thirteen. Uh, Honey Nut Cheerios. Uh, I was super excited when Apple Cinnamon Cheerios came out. I remember that. Yeah. The multi-grain Cheerios are actually pretty good. They actually kind of had a certain sweetness to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of which I, I enjoyed. Um, of course, there was Chex, but that right now, even today, I enjoy Chex mainly in Chex Mix. Mm-hmm. Um, and my mom makes her own Chex Mix, but instead of using Chex, she uses Crispix. Which are basically a different brands, uh, mm-hmm. checks, but instead of being like how checks has mm-hmm. like their corn checks, wheat checks, rice checks, um, Crispix has like I think it's the corn and the wheat, but it's on each side of each of the things. That's right, and they're kind of in a uh, hexagon formation instead of a square. I. Wow. And instead of like having some corn checks and having some wheat checks and mixing them together as part of the checks mix, you just use uses the crisp mix, which basically covers both. Interesting. I so forgot about that. And it makes sense. Also, because I think Kellogg's is in Minnesota, if I'm not mistaken. Am I wrong? Uh, General wrong. Mills is Minnesota. That, see, I'm wrong. <laughs> I know because the reason why Serial Venture, which was a GM, General Mills. There you go. There uh, you go. Uh, 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 attraction um, was because General Mills is, yeah. is based in Minnesota. I should have put I'm not that. sure. I mean, it's possible Kellogg's is also in Minnesota, but. That would be. Fun. Anyway, I'm not going to go there. Um, so I. Love, 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 love Honey Nut Cheerios. Like, that's a cereal I will probably eat till... Classic. Yeah, till, like, I can't eat cereal anymore. It's it's good. It does not need anything extra. It wasn't a sugary cereal. Like, Cheerios, like you talked about, um, Gary, you talked about earlier. I like Cheerios, but Cheerios get sugar on it. Like... <laughs> <laughs> we had like we had this i would say suffer that's a bad word um because every now and then my you know our family we had to get that kit because it was the 80s and everyone's all like every now and then things would flip flop in regards to like health conscious and whatever and blah 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 so i remember we would get like 
the Cheerios and our mom would be like, well, we're going to get, we're eating it because we're trying to eat healthy. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what would happen every time she did that? We would the sugar get a bowl, bowl would come out. Yes, we would get a bowl of food, make a bowl of Cheerios, grab, grab, you know, pour the pour the cereal in the box, in in the bowl, then grab the sugar, take a tea like a the spoon that you're using, put a nice heaping helping like (laughs) thing of sugar (laughs) on it, and then sprinkle it all around. You you probably put more much more sugar than I did. Did mine would be a full full spoon. (laughs) But it would be like sprinkled on, and sometimes I wouldn't use it all. Yeah, because I just want it. I just want sweetness. I don't want it to be sugary. I want it just to be a little sweeter, right? Here's the spoon. Here's the top of the sugar. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's way more more sugar than than I would ever put it. (laughs) And and that's the nice thing about Honey Nut Cheerios is because it has the sweetness already there. Agreed. Uh, Sweetens the milk even. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, apple cinnamon was kind of the same thing. It was mm-hmm. it was a different flavor and it was a little sweeter than the regular Cheerios. And it was enough of a sweetness there that you're like, oh, okay, I can just eat this. Um, did I add sugar to it sometimes? Probably. As a kid, maybe. Anyway, um, I did not get multi-grain checks or Cheerios. Um, I don't think I ever did. But the thing is, all all three of these are ones that I would also use as a snack, not as yeah. like the soup of cereal. Mm. Fair, for fair. Huh. Because yes. cause I, I think that parents would have probably benefited more if, it, you know how a lot of parents would carry around that plastic bag with, with some Cheerios inside? They probably would have done better if what was inside was like Honey Nut Cheerios or <laughs> cinnamon Cheerios, mm. the flavored Cheerios. Yeah, there was one. Oh, it was Frosted Cheerios. That's right. I was trying to like. There was one that was like had like like. I always thought I'm Frosted sorry. Cheerios was unnecessary. Frosted Flakes, sure, but Frosted Cheerios unnecessary. There were yeah. options. Yep, yep, yep. That yep, have been yep. around for longer, I think. Mm. No. Okay. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Well, speaking of like healthier cereals that are actually good for you, um, um, my honorable mention, I actually have two. My first one is related to this, and that is double checks. So. Okay. Someone came up with the idea, which it seems silly that they never did, to, like, take the wheat and the corn or the wheat and the rice, one of the or corn and rice, one of the two, like, the because you used to get checks, you can get, you can get corn checks, you can get rice checks, you can get wheat checks, you can get, but you could never, like, you never got two. So they had double checks. In addition, the link that I shared is actually the commercial that is burned in my brain. Um, and why you ask? Listen to it. You'll know exactly why. <laughs> it's corn and rice. Ah, thank you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> They're totally using the the double gimmick as, uh-huh. as part of the theme song. Totally. I barely remember this. Like, I barely remember the commercial, and I kind of remember the serial. Because we were such a, a Chex house, mm-hmm. um, like, every holiday season, the moment the recipe came out, like, it was a guarantee we were going to make Chex Mix in the house. And... Honey, let me tell you, when they invented the seasoning mix, so you just, like, use the melted butter and the seasoning mix, like, without all the rest of the steps, that was, like, revolutionary. Yeah. Yeah. I'm By the way, the stuff. recipe is permanently on their website. For Chex Mix? Uh, take your pick on the checks. The checks mix. They've got gluten free original checks oh. mix. They've got original checks mix. Gluten free 
free Chex Mix Muddy, Muddy, Muddy Buddies, Chex Mary um, Green, or Chex Mary Green Mix, Sugar and Spice Chex Holiday Mix. Oh my goodness. They've got an, an, a whole bunch. They've got a spiked eggnog Chex Mix, but they don't have a photo for it yet. Interesting. So yeah, so double checks was kind of the big thing. And it was one, again, for some reason, because if you look at the commercial, it does say it was sweetened. Um, I don't think it was like overly sweet, but it was had a little sweetness to it too. too. And with the rice and the corn, especially the corn probably now that I know, um, there was also that sweetness there. So when I, think I, of che- when I think of checks, just checks, mm-hmm. my mind immediately just goes to the corn checks. Mm. And then everything yeah. else is just another variety of checks yeah holy but, cow yes gary this website hang on what 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 are you what are you what are you doing what are you doing why are you ugh. hang on so one two three uh 75 78 and one right and one mm-hmm. 79 Chex Mix recipes mm-hmm. on this website. This crazy. Wow. If you, anybody wonders what website we're talking about, we're talking about Chex.com. Right, where they have all these, they have an apple pie Chex Mix. <gasps> Ooh, chili lime Chex Mix. Uh-oh. I'm interested in that. <sighs> Jeff is now, or Gary is now interested. Anyway... So to go on, um, um, I could go into several here, um, but this one I will mention as uh, as an honorable mention because it's one of the ones that I am not a big fan of chocolate cereals, and this was one of my favorite because it was cocoa it's, and it's cocoa puffs. Mm-hmm. Um, my brother liked fruity or cocoa pebbles. One of my brothers liked cocoa pebbles. One of my other brothers like Cocoa Krispies. Mm-hmm. I wanted the puffs. <laughs> like, I love, like, Cocoa Puffs. And, you know, everyone knows the commercials, and it's obviously still kind of, again, it's one of those other ones that's ingrained in our society. Um, but it's one of my favorites. And um, there's another one, and I wish I could remember the name of it, but... Or maybe I'll have to find it again because it's not the same. Anyway, but uh, yeah, I was I love Cocoa Puffs. Um, it's one of the few times, especially as a kid, that I would actually drink the milk because it was because it was chocolate milk, basically. Mm-hmm. So interesting. Do they not make brand checks anymore? No. No. Oh yeah, man, that was like my dad's favorite. <laughs> it was a, it was a big deal because like that was the brown checks, mm-hmm. like in the, the dark checks brown, checks. yeah. Rice brand corn, wheat. Che- oh wait a minute, it well at least per Wikipedia it says it's still being made. It's just not listed on the website. Oh, I wonder if it's like seasonal or limited availability or something. Could be. I don't know. Interesting. So, yeah, it, it, when you type in when you type in brand checks, you get multi brand checks. Mm. Oh, they probably had to change the thing yeah. of the recipe over the years or something. Maybe because it didn't have all, it just didn't have brand. It had anyway, whatever. I don't know. Do you know what's cracking me up? So, so anyways, Cheerios is known for lowering cholesterol. Can help, right? So I'm reading this, and it explains that you need. Um, <laughs> Three grams of soluble fiber daily from whole grain oat foods can help with your diet, right? But each serving only has 0.75 grams. And a serving is a cup. So you so to get all of your like soluble three fiber grams? Yeah. In in one meal, if you were trying to like knock out your soluble fiber in your breakfast, you'd have to eat four cups of the cereal every morning. I'm like that's a lot and what's cracking me up is i'm looking at these other cereals and i'm reading their ingredients and i'm like wow they have more more soluble fiber than Chex does or che- cheerios does but cheerios is the one that's known for promoting it just 
<sighs> it amuses me. Marketing. Uh, mm-hmm. Also, Sorry. if if you want to make sure that you have the appropriate amounts of uh, corn, rice, and uh, wheat checks, uh, checks.com is offering the Czech cereal triple pack bum- bundle, uh, which mm. contains rice, corn, and wheat checks, which uh, has enough to make two full batches of the original checks party mix. Interesting. Cool. I'm. Sorry, now I'm distracted looking through all their Chex Mix <laughs> recipes. They have a gingerbread Chex Mix. Oh, stop it. Stop looking. What? It's like... I'm... Okay, so here's the deal with the spiked eggnog one. Uh, it has real bourbon in it. Just so you know. Like, I, I'm like, oh, okay. Three tablespoons of bourbon. I know it's not a lot, but, you know, counts. Made with real bourbon. And, and you could put the type of bourbon that you want in it. It just um, says bourbon. Yeah, so it could be any variety or any flavor. Anyway, no, nope, yeah. nope. We're yeah. not. We're not doing that. We're not going. We're not going to tell. We're not going to tell Jim about that. Because guess what will be made here? Oh, actually, I would like it. That would be fun to have him to make it though. Make some fucking. Oh, Tex Mix. Okay. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Gary, what about you? Um, so here's my honorable mention, and I still have this every once in a while to this day. It is not technically a children's cereal. Like, it's not a, it's not a, a, a youth, um, sugar kind of thing. It's grape nuts. Um. Who hurt you? What's that? <laughs> Who hurt you? <laughs> Funny! This was, like, one of the, one of the mainstay cereals we had as a kid growing, for me, in our household growing up. It was either Chex or grape nuts. Those were the those were the big ones um, that we pretty so, much had so, all the time. So, hmm. what? So, so I guess in your family you didn't enjoy taste. <laughs> okay, well I will say this. <laughs> May my mother rest in peace. She was not a good cook, and she knew this. When I was very young, before my parents divorced. It was classically known in my household that my mother would ruin pasta. She would turn pasta, she would turn egg noodles into paste. Oh, God. And to this day, I have still not been able to quite figure out what she did (laughs) that made them turn into, like, a gelatinous mass. Mm. <laughs> but my mother was the type of person that could burn water. Wow. Which is wow. to say, just leave the water boiling on the pot and forget about it. And then it all evaporates. And then the all the very person to cut in the pot boil and then the pot coat cut yeah. on fire. Yeah. So I, I quickly, especially when my parents divorced, I mean, my dad was, was, I mean, don't get me wrong. My mother could cook. She <laughs> had to follow a recipe though. Yeah. Absolutely. Had to have an index card. Or a cutout or whatever. Mm -hmm, And I'm mm -hmm. I'm very pleased. I feel blessed that I do have our recipe box from when I was a kid. And the Betty Crocker orange cover hard cover cookbook um, that she used. um, Because that's, you know, that's just what we were raised on. So I realized saying the cereal makes it (laughs) sound like we were pretty bland or whatever. But, you know, we just... We didn't. Well, I think, you know, I think the way it is, we didn't live high on like flavor stuff. That honestly, that didn't really come about until like almost probably close to the nineties. That you know, that that our palate as Americans started this whole like crazy, you know, intensity thing. Mm. But, but you know, yeah. yeah. So no, I still to this day, like every once in a while, every about once every four years, I kind of like think, oh, you know what? I think I'll pick up a box of grape nuts. Mm. And I enjoy it. I don't have any problem with it. Um, it's not very like exciting. I get that. Um, it doesn't have much sugar in it. Um, you know, it only has four ingredients, <laughs> basically. So <laughs> it's you know, pretty pretty basic. Um, so yeah. And I've never had the flakes. So like, there's grape nuts, the original, and then grape nuts flakes. Um, which I guess is just the grape nuts like crushed and turned into flakes. Like, I'm not really <laughs> Possibly. sure. Possibly. 
I just it so like uh so for me grape nuts um you slicks that's a cereal I remember mm. um that's a that's a uh, like raisin bran I was like where's what's the cereal that I was trying to remember like raisin, raisin bran is good. So again, raisin bran aside, but like for me, those were the cereals. Like those are the cereals your parents ate. Like those were the adult cereals, quote unquote. Like the the like even like Cheerios too, in a sense. But like most of the, those are like the the bland, like nasty ass cereals that <laughs> your parents ate, and you ate only because there was no cereal left. Like it was the absolute last thing. As a child, I hated Raisin Bran. Dope. Don't know. Don't even no. I no, I don't want that. Get that shit out of my face. Mm. Um now, um, particularly like Raisin Bran Crunch, like the one like the ones we had at, at work, I could eat like two, three bowls of that, like easily. Cause it's good. And 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 Eat it without adding sugar. I'll put it like that. Like just like straight out the like straight out the in the bowl. Like pour the cereal on it, eat it. Growing up, that was not the case. No. Right. As a kid, definitely not. As a kid, definitely not. Um but uh I I used to I uh I I liked raisin brain as a kid too. Yeah. Cereal now that just I'm mm-hmm. just not remembering. I like raisins I though. <sighs> yeah, see, I'm not a big fan of raisins. So we did that for a while too, and that shit pissed me off. There was a whole period, I don't remember what happened, that we had to have raisin bran like cereal. And I was like, What what is this torture? And why are we doing this? It's, it's one of the things that that kind of baffles me is people not liking raisins. I'm like they all they are are just like dried grapes. <laughs> Yeah. They are. I I personally have kind of figured out as I've as I've gotten older, I'm not a fan of candied or dried fruit. Okay. I find it chewy, sticks to my teeth. Like it's just not something that I, I'm a fan of. Like um dried apricots, um, dried prunes, raisins, uh, dried cranberries. I don't mind dried cranberries, but like more often than not, like no matter what it's in when I eat it, I find that it sticks to my teeth, specifically my molars. And then I'm like picking at my teeth and I'm like, that's not what I want. <laughs> like when mm-hmm. I eat food, I don't want to like work. Well, I don't. It's just an, an annoyance. I'm like, I shouldn't have to like try to get it unstuck mm-hmm. from my teeth mm-hmm. after I'm done eating, I guess. is where that comes think from. of the. <sighs> There's a cereal that now I cannot remember, and I'm trying to remember it, and I'm I probably won't remember it for a while. Um, but it was a a cereal. It was they were they were it was they were shaped like like the like the O's like you have behind you. They were, but in the middle it had like stuff like in it, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. like the gram and sugar and like honey and oat or something. I cannot remember the name of the cereal. Now, I will say this. I have discovered if you give me a healthier cereal and you put a nut cluster in it, like, like, so, like, I don't need the flakes to be like Captain Crunch, crunch, hard. like, you know, mm-hmm. like so hard that they'll like, you know, they're impermeable to milk. I don't mm-hmm. need that. But the thing I hated about Raisin Bran was that it pretty much instantly started to disintegrate in milk. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it fall That's apart true. and turn into mush. And then I had mush and I had partially rehydrated fruit that stuck to my teeth. I guess like I just it just wasn't my thing. So I've realized as I've got older, I'm like, oh, if you put stuff in it, mm-hmm. like yeah, like my you know, like, like freeze dried strawberries. That's okay. Um, or nuts, nut clusters, something of that sort, then then I pay far more attention. I, I'm willing to have cereal. That that's kind of what's is all that uh for me these days. Like I'm trying to think if there's 
But I, I honestly, I don't really have cereal very much today. Like even adult stuff, there's just nothing that really kind of calls to me or Not gets some my interest. As we gotten older. Yeah, I mean, it's like you know, I know some people are really into you know certain kind of things, and so they'll have like corn flakes or special K or you know, I mean, they're having a, a more adult, healthier version of something. But I'm just like, meh, like just just. So you know that cereal that's O shaped that has stuff in the middle? Let me guess, they're Cheerios. No, they're Honey O's. <laughs> o H S or Honey Graham O's. Okay. Just looked it up, feeling really silly and stupid, looking at this like <laughs> this box of the cereal that is exactly what I remembered it being. <laughs> Anyway, don't mind me. I'm just going to sit over here and just fade into the shadows and be done. Now, I will say this, and I don't know why I would have had this. I must have been traveling for work, maybe. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. That's one that holds up pretty decently. Mm -hmm. As far as, like, it's a technically a kid's cereal, but it's sweet, but it's got some flavor. Like, and that did come out in the 80s. Um I remember when I was in college, I worked at the dining hall and we had a whole bank of ce dried cereal dispensers. And mm -hmm. we had an opposite on the other side of this one section, we had a whole bank of like milk dispensers. And this was a big deal for college kids that you could have fucking cereal every Anytime meal. Anytime you <laughs> want it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, and it's funny because I remember like, and and I didn't eat that much cereal when I was in college, but I just remember like, that was like, oh. You know, it was like Nirvana or Valhalla. Like you just like could have and you could do whatever you wanted. Like if you wanted. But that was a big thing. I remember being a teenager and a young adult, like mixing shit up, like mixing sodas, mixing like, you know, cereal, like whatever. Like, you know, if you could do it, you would just like you'd invent, make new things or whatever. So, yeah, um, that's just kind of wild. Yeah. Yeah, I just I'm. it's very interesting to me realizing like some of the stuff like that I enjoyed like the, like as we've been talking about this, like I remembered alphabets and I loved alphabets and I remember cinnamon toast crunch. I just remember golden grams. Um, mm. the set, the honey, the honey, um, gram O's like there's all these flavors and things. And again, some of it is commercialism. I will own a, probably a lot of it's commercialism. Um, right. But, uh, like, I'll never forget, like, Fruity Pebbles, Cocoa Pebbles, Rice Krispies. I won't forget those because a lot of that has been dug into my brain, especially as a young, as a young kid. Um, but um, now I'm like, I probably wouldn't remember the flavor or the taste or the texture. Mm. Some have stuck out, as we kind of talked about this, but, like, some I probably would never remember what they what it was. Like I was like the the cereal, the honey gram O's. Um, I was just remembering. I was just like, I was like, oh, gosh, I remember that. Why? What? What was it? And I remember the taste of it. And I remember loving it, but I could not for the life of me remember the name of it. And it has a really generic name. Maybe and maybe it always did. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Um. I'm reading this weird article about how some American breakfast cereals have to be smuggled into Canada. Hmm. Because apparently they're not available there. Like Cocoa Pebbles, Cookie Crisp, Fruity Pebbles, Frankenberry, which is, you know, seasonal limited cereals. when it comes out. Speaking of the monster cereals, do y'all remember Fruit Brute? Yep. I do they, don't. Do, does that come out seasonally anymore? Yeah, no. It does. Fruit Brute oh, does, does not. Oh, Frankenberry does. Booberry and Count Chocula are the three that come out every year. Um, and there's another one, and I can't remember what the name of it was. Fruity um, Yummy Mummy. Yes, Yummy Mummy was the other one, and um, so. Berry, so Chocula, Frankenberry, and Booberry are the only ones that now come out seasonally. 
the other two got dropped. Like I think they were brought back in 2013. I read earlier yeah. today or something, and then apparently they didn't make a. Yeah, good so impression. monster serials have been around since 1971, debuting with Count Chocula and Frankenberry. 1973, they introduced Blueberry. They added a Fruit Boot in 1974. Uh, Yummy Mummy came in ni- <clears throat> 1988. Uh, uh, oh, Fruit Brute actually ended in 1983. Then they sold, probably promotionally speaking, a new version in 2013 for Fruit Brute and Yummy Mummy, but the other three have just continued with their season- seasonality. Yeah. Uh, and so, so. And apparently last year, General Mills launched the Monster Mash cereal in 2021 for the 50th anniversary. And it included Booberry, Count Chocula, Frankenberry, Fruit Brute, and Fruity Yummy Mummy, all five in the same box. Oh, Lord. I don't know. I'm curious. I don't know. I'm curious to see if this is available on eBay. I bet you like, <laughs> that's the only place you can find it now because I, I, it was only probably during the Halloween season last year. Yep. Nine dollars. That's nice. So it's basically they went with Count Dracula. Um, uh, uh, Frankenstein, a ghost. Uh, Fruit Brute was the uh, was a werewolf. Uh huh. And the uh, Yummy Mummy, of course, was a mummy. Apparently, there was a Walmart promotional box. Came with a shirt and some other things too. Interesting. Somebody, these people are selling empty cereal boxes on eBay. Really. I mean, I guess if you're a collector, but that's a surprise to me. Wow. Jim Lee designed Booberry, redesigned Booberry in 2014. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Count Chocula was designed by Terry Dodson and Frank Berry was designed by Dave Johnson. All of them were working at DC Comics at the time. I think Jim Lee's still at DC Comics, but that could be wrong. Interesting. So the Monster Mash won't, it won't have chocolate, um, Count Chocolate won't taste like chocolate. What? In the Monster Mash, so if you look at the box, it says artificially berry flavored frosted cereal with monster marshmallows. So oh. Count Chocula is not going to taste like chocolate. And that's a no for me. Oh. Interesting. Well, chocolate and the other flavors might be a little much. Yeah. It might not taste good. Although chocolate and berry kind of works. But I think it's also with, I don't know. Maybe the, mar- I don't know. If the marshmallows are fruity flavored as well, probably not. It just might be a little too much. I'm reading the ingredients listing photographed on the side of the box. Whole grain corn, cornmeal, sugar, corn syrup canola and or sunflower oil, modified cornstarch, dextrose, which is also sugar, salt, gelatin, red 40, blue 1, yellow 5 and 6, trisodium phosphate, natural and artificial flavor. And that's it. Mm. So no no chocolate something. or mm. Unless that's a natural or artificial flavor. <laughs> there you go. Well. Wild. Very wild. So I think that's it. Yeah, Mr. that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. uh, we hope we are not rotting your teeth with the sugar of the cereals we've been talking about. Yeah. But uh, our, you can give us your feedback on your favorite nostalgic cereals mm-hmm. <clears throat> over on our website, CubsOutLoud.com. You can leave a comment on the blog. Just an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. If you would like to chat with us, you can do so and with uh, many other fans uh, at our Telegram chat at 
tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. If you want to see when we're planning on recording these shows, you can subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can find various merchandise, such as a Cubs Out Loud shirt that Gary and I are wearing in two different designs, and, or a consent is my foreplay shirt, shirt over at Zazzle, zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. That consent is my foreplay shirt. Uh, was designed by Smashy, where you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud uh, or just send us a donation by doing that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can rate us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon Audible, and Spotify, uh, pretty much any other uh, plat- podcasting platform. And you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Hat, Box Puppy, Box Cut, Box something or other. Also, Windgem on Twitch, W Y N D G E M uh, on Twitch. We skipped Bears of Dragons this last week because I wasn't feeling very well. Well, but we'll be back this week. Damon. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as um, Theater Cub 79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Most bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. And with that, say goodnight, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Ciao for now. <laughs> <laughs>